I've headed a few miles east. To this place, Studland Bay. At this time of year, and even when it's as miserable as this, it's a magnet for holidaymakers, tourists, and presenters on special missions. My mission's not to get a tan, clearly. I'm here to see one of our most magical creatures, the seahorse. And right here is the best place to do that. Why is Studland Bay so good for the seahorses? It's just an amazing bay because it's nice and sheltered. It has a really amazing seagrass bed growing here and we have all these incredible species living here. But this isn't just a jolly for you, is it? There's important scientific work going on. No, there. funny enough, a lot of people think it is just a jolly, but we're actually learning a lot of information about the seahorses. It's actually serious scientific work. We're actually tagging individual seahorses as well, so we can learn more about what they're doing, where they go, how they distribute, who they pair with. So, so seahorses are small. How on earth do you tag a seahorse? We have, I actually have a, a little model seahorse here, and if you have a look around the neck, we actually have this little tag here that sits around the neck, and each tag actually has a number on it so that we know which seahorse it was where we found it etc we're also doing things like profile head profile photographs as well so we can identify seahorses from side on with their picture as well it's like a individual fin fingerprint for each seahorse i'm very keen to get out of this miserable weather what are the chances that we're going to see a seahorse today well, hopefully really good because we've tagged the seahorses and we know where they live we know where to look for them so fingers crossed we're actually going to see them we're getting fully kitted up so we can stay down a while. We want to give ourselves the best chance of seeing the elusive seahorses. Incredible to think we're only 200 metres from shore, but this is where they are. Hopefully. Only diving in a couple of metres of water, but it's really hard to get down when it's quite shallow. So I've got quite a lot of weight on my belt here to try and get as low as I need to do. But the visibility is not too bad, so I'm really hoping I'm going to get to see Seahorses are masters of disguise. They can change colour at will. Even an expert like Neil has trouble spotting them. The trouble is they blend in so well with their environment. It's very, very difficult to see them. And then right on cue, we see one. This is amazing. I, I don't think I'd have ever seen this without you, Neil. Absolutely amazing, aren't they? And then we spot another. This one's okay, it's just plain dead. She looks fine, so we'll try and measure her now, and then we'll check her number. Allowing for the tail to be unfilled, she's found 15 centimetres. A healthy specimen, but she couldn't have chosen a busier spot to call home. Even on dull days, boats moor up in Studland Bay, and that's causing inadvertent damage beneath the waves. Anchors and mooring chains are ripping up the seabed, damaging vital breeding grounds. This spot should be thick with seagrass. All that's left is bare seabed. But it's not all bad. A voluntary no anchor zone is being trialled, giving breeding pairs a fighting chance. If you look along the edge of the sea bar, and I get my first sight of a pregnant male. Yep, a pregnant male, because in the seahorse world, it's the males who have the babies. Oh, my goodness! That's amazing! Oh, wow. That's extraordinary. Look how large the belly is on him. 
Male and females have close overlapping territories, so this fella must be the partner of the female we spotted earlier. Neil's got a special license, so it's okay for me to hold this seahorse, but he doesn't seem to want to budge. He's got an incredibly strong grip. There we go. It's a magical feeling to hold one of these stunning creatures. We know he's pregnant, we know what number he is, and we got him just at the last time that we saw him. Seahorses are many, many offspring per year. And like many sea creatures, very few make it through to adulthood. Only one in a thousand, really. Most of the young get picked off by predators. This fellow's one of the lucky few to have made it to adulthood. Right, it's time for this one to go back into the seagrass. It's amazing how they just sit there. That was amazing. If you let me leave the seahorse in peace, shall we? Unbelievable to get that close. And if you've been inspired to have a go at snorkelling or diving, it's one of thousands of free or low-cost activities on offer all around the country to help get you started. Here's how you can get a slice of the action.